Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to program and set up this 3.5 inch TFT LCD shield for the Mega 2560 microcontroller or also known as the Arduino Mega. Now if we take a look at the back over here, it uses the driver ILI9486. A quick note, I'm not an expert at programming. I just learned how to program this from a few websites and YouTube tutorials, but I have a pretty good understanding of how it works. Now let's start the video. You can directly connect your display to your microcontroller by placing it on top and it will look like this. But if you want to connect other things to your microcontroller, then I'd recommend using cables like what I did over here. Because if I were to connect it without the cables and just directly plug it in, then this area over here will be covered, which means I can't plug in anything else to this microcontroller. To program this, I'm going to use the Arduino IDE. Now since Arduino is open source, this software is actually free and it's available on all of the major platforms including macOS, Windows, and Linux. So let's open the app over here and maximize the window. Now we have our setup and our loop. So for now, I'm just gonna delete all of this and start writing the code from scratch. Here I am in this blank sketch. Now we're gonna be using two libraries. So the first one is the LCD wiki GUI.h and the second one is the LCD wiki KBV.h. And if you don't have these libraries already installed, then you can download them from the library manager. So just click on tools and then manage libraries and then search for these libraries and then press install. Or you can also search on Google and look for those libraries, then download it onto your laptop or computer. You'll find the libraries folder inside your Arduino folder. So we tap on libraries over here. I have all the installed libraries. And if I scroll down, we should see the library somewhere here. There we go. So there's our LCD wiki GUI and KBV. Now I'm gonna write some code to set everything up and you don't even need to know what it does. I actually don't even know what it does, but basically it allows everything to work and that's the important part. So we're gonna write down a driver over here is the ILI 9486. And I'm gonna speed up the video so it doesn't become too boring. You can pause the video so you can easily copy this code. Now you want to connect your board to your laptop. And if you have a newer MacBook Air or MacBook Pro model, then you'll probably need a USB-A to USB-C adapter. But since my Windows laptop has a full USB-A port, I can just plug it in directly. And it lights up. The board lights up. The screen lights up. I have some code from a previous project where I was testing out a button. So when I press the button, it will update the number on the screen. Anyway, let's see if the computer detected our board. So we're gonna go over here and check. I click on this. So this isn't the correct port. And I have a quick trick to determine which port your board is connected to. So all you need to do is unplug your USB cable, just like this, and see which port disappears. So the COM6 disappeared meaning that's the correct port that I need to select. If I plug it back in, COM6 reappears, and that's basically where my board is connected to. So it's already in the correct configuration, where's the Arduino Mega. But if your board isn't selected, then you'll have to press select over here, and then search for the exact model, and then click OK. So OK is right down there. You can click on the check on the top left to verify the code. So there's a bit of an error, I'm not really sure why, but let's press upload anyway which is the right arrow over here. And we're also getting an error. So I guess we need to write down something over here. Let's write the void setup. Oh, it's black. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be black. Okay, so I got to work. I'm not really sure how. I just kept unplugging it and plugging it into different ports and then trying to upload it again. But that was a strange glitch. Now it works. So I have a program over here that just fills the screen with black. And as you can see, it works. So now we can write blue, for example. And it will fill our screen with blue, supposedly. And if it does, that means it's working. Um, yeah, it works. There we go. We have blue. You be... Now you should already be able to set up and program your display. But I'm going to show you a few other code examples so that you can play around with the display and test it out. So this first command that I did a while ago was called mylcd.fillscreen. And this will allow you to fill your display with a solid color. 
So we can select one of the colors over here. For example, it's white. And if we look at the display, it's just solid white. Now let's change it to something else like magenta, for example. And it will change to magenta. Very simple, right? And you can also do something like this, where we go to like white and then add a delay. So let's add our delay over here of let's say a thousand milliseconds. And then we're gonna fill the screen with red. Now watch what will happen. So if we upload our code over here, we're gonna get white and red, white and red. So like some sort of siren, or I mean, you know, those, those flashing lights, see? Red and white. Pretty interesting, right? One of the most common things people display on a display is text. Now there are a few ways to edit the text. So for example, I'm gonna write my LCD text size. So as you can see, if I start typing, we have some suggestions over here. So let's just click on text size. And we can set a text size to like size 10, for example. Then another one is, let's do this in first. My LCD set text color. Now keep in mind, the spelling of color is like this in this library. So let's set our text color to blue, for example. Okay. And then we have another one, which is called my LCD set text mode. And this allows you to change the mode from one and zero. But there's a slight difference in the one and zero mode. So I'll show you in a while, but let's write zero for now. And then we're going to print our actual text. So let's write my LCD print string, I think. Yeah, print string. And let's write subscribe. Okay. Kind of hard to type since my iPhone's blocking my view. Whoops, we got a little error. And why is that? Let's see. Remember when I said pay attention to the spelling of color? Well, actually, I spelled color correctly, but it's supposed to be in lower caps. So um, we just need to move our C to lowercase. There we go, every detail counts. And for this one, I actually forgot to write down the coordinates. So let's just write, let's say 38, or actually let's say 20 and 30. So this is the position that the text will appear on the display. Now let's upload it over here. Let me just zoom out. And, oh, it doesn't work also. So, what's wrong? Seems like I forgot the... I forgot this. There we go. That should be complete. And... There's a subscribe, but because our text size is 10, it's too large so we can move our text size to five for example so that the subscribe can actually fit on our display let me return this over here now our subscribe can fit on our display i'm not sure why it's flickering i'm not sure why it's flickering but i'm assuming it's something to do with the loop so let's just cut all of this over here and put it into our setup and uh, place it uh, right here so we want our our initialization to be over here at the top just like that okay let's see and if it stops flickering then that's good still uploading okay there we go so i fixed it now let's just get rid of our loop since we don't need it anyway and as you can see it's a subscribe now earlier, I showed you this code which is called my LCD set text mode. And you can change the mode between 0 and 1. Now this is called mode 0 where it kind of has like some sort of color inversion and has almost like a highlight. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but as you can see the back of the subscribe has a red like like box around it. Now if we set our text mode to 1, it will remove that box and only show the text. So it's almost like word art on Microsoft Word where it has a different type of design. So let's see, experiment with text mode one over here. And uh, we're getting an error. I'm not sure why. Let me just try it again. Oh no. 
we're getting an error again. I've been trying to figure out why I kept getting these errors and I restarted my laptop and everything like that. But I actually just learned something new today and it was really interesting. So if you delete the void loop, it will say undefined reference to loop. And that's what was causing my errors. So the previous clip where I said delete the void loop, well, actually don't delete the void loop since this programming language doesn't allow it to um, upload without detecting the void loop, even if there's nothing inside it. It just has to exist somehow. So that's how we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> now I'm going to upload it again and it will work for sure, right? Well, fingers crossed. So now we have our text mode zero, our text mode one, I mean, and that's what our text mode one looks like. Let me just adjust this over here. So it's easier to see. There's our text mode one. And if we go back to our text mode zero, this is what it looks like in comparison. Wait for it. There we go. That's text mode zero versus text mode one. Now I'm gonna write some more code over here. Let me just copy this. This is kind of hard to type while my camera's in front of me. Paste over there. Let's say, whoops. Let's say, thanks for watching. Let's move this down to 40, move this down to 60, and then our text mode will be 1. Let's upload it. Done. Now watch what happens. Oh no, that was actually in the wrong direction. So the first number over here is for the horizontal and not the vertical. So let's just fix that over here. Let's bring them back to all 20 and bring this one to like 50 and then 120. There's some random numbers to make them space themselves out vertically. Whoops, error. Why? Okay, done. So sometimes I get an error for no reason. I'm not really sure why. And it's not spaced out enough, so let's move this to like 80. And move this, yeah, okay, that's okay. So the first number over here is our horizontal alignment, and the second number is our vertical alignment. There we go, thanks for watching. Now hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and found it useful. Feel free to leave a question or comment down below if you're having some trouble setting it up. And please like and subscribe for more and it helps support the channel. So, thanks for watching.